again. Welcome to worship at Breckenridge Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Mark Manning. I want to welcome you if you've joined together today over cable channel 12, if you've joined together with us over our radio broadcast over AM 1450, if you've joined together with us over our, our website uh, worship, which will be a, posted on our website later this week, if you've joined together over Facebook. God bless you as we've joined together as the people of God, the body of Christ. As we've done so today, you'll notice people in our sanctuary as we have begun to open up and reopen our church building. We acknowledge that, of course, our church has never really been closed. The, the ministry of these people, the ministry of the people of this congregation has been going on all along. Every time that you've seen a broadcast of a worship service, the ministry has continued through the efforts of volunteers, through the efforts of our broadcast technicians, through the efforts of our musicians. And so we are reminded today that we are really only reopening our building. And as we do so, because of uh, uh, the responsibilities that we feel, we are still going to observe certain things that are different from our worship tradition. You'll notice that uh, as I came up here, I had a mask on because I was in and with and amongst my parishioners. And I love them and care for them dearly. Um, as I come up here, I'll take that, that mask off. I will um, um, preach from farther up here without it. But as, as we go down then and we have communion, something which we have not had now together for over two months, I'll put that back on. As we also join here together today, um, our music will be different. It will be instrumentally played, but also sung as a, uh, a solo uh, as well. And we do have two pieces of music for that purpose today, but our congregational singing for a time will, um, will cease. For a time, we will have different forms of and different ways of worshiping, using music. Of course, we will not be passing the peace for some time. And, and we're asking people who have come to take the responsibility that our state government now has let go, but still nonetheless handed over to us, handed over to us to protect and take care of our neighbor first. And so we do that here. And we welcome you and, and also remind you that if you can't come or if you're, if you're wondering whether you should come, we encourage you, we encourage you if you are, have an underlying health condition or at-risk uh, health circumstances, please do tune in to one of our many worship broadcasts. Welcome then as we've joined together and I would ask that you please rise and turn to your bulletin. We won't be needing to use the hymnals, that way we don't have to clean them. And uh, we we'll join together in this brief order of confession and forgiveness of sin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work within us and this world. Amen. Amen. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. God and Father of all, we confess that we have sinned against you in God's word and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O oh God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us for the sake of Jesus our Savior. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away and you are made new. 
Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let's join together, if you would, praying using the words of the prayer of the day. For this Holy Trinity Sunday, they are printed in your celebrate insert. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our lessons today. On this Holy Trinity Sunday, uh, the first lesson focuses on God who is the creator. And, and if you think about this, this will fit together then uh, on Holy Trinity Sunday when we pray or when we say our, our uh, Apostles' Creed, the first article of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. This is the first article of the Apostles' Creed. This is the first member, first part of the Trinity. From Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were above the dome from the waters that were under the dome. And it was so. And God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together, he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, fruit trees of every kind, and, and on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it, and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let there be for signs and for seasons and, 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 and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw it was good. And there was evening 
And there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which water swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of, of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with the seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And every beast of the earth, and every bird of the air, and everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. Here ends our reading. Our psalm reading is Psalm 8. We'll read this responsibly. <clears throat> O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenge. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals, mortals that you should be mindful of them, them. Human, human beings that, that you should care of them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have you made, made them rule over the works of your hands. hands. You, you have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our second lesson, um, and after the second lesson, then we'll have Joy sing our hymn of praise in preparation for our gospel. Our second lesson is... The uh, 
from a short reading from the, uh, the uh, first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. And as uh, they've gathered to hear, and I have this wrong here, it is from actually the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. It's the end of, the, it's the end of his letter to them. So there's a challenge. But whatever they do is, is grounded multiply. It's grounded in what God has done um, since the beginning of time. It's grounded in what Jesus has done on the earth in his life, in his death, and in his resurrection. It's grounded in the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit. And he commends them then with that with that ongoing work. This is what he writes. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, or with all of you. Here ends our reading. <laughs> song has come join the dance of Trinity and speaks to the the working um, of uh, each of the each of the parts of the Trinity God the Father God the Son uh, God the Holy Spirit and today in our gospel lesson then we have Jesus invoking those three members of the Trinity as he prepares to leave them. This is from Matthew, and in Matthew, um, we don't have a, a, so much a, a, an ascension of Jesus like we did in, in Luke and Acts, but in, in Matthew, we have what is called the Great Commission. Jesus may be leaving, but the work is not done, and his spirit will continue to abide with them. From Matthew chapter 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came, and he said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Here ends our gospel reading. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, as we gather here today, um, we have been uh, over the last uh, almost 12 days in the state of Minnesota, but now in our country and in the world, um, addressing um, um, injustice, addressing violence, addressing uh, uh, things which are difficult for us as a nation and of people sometimes to talk about. Uh, um, the deaths of people, um, violence, um, the uses of power, destruction of private and public property. Now, I tried to speak to those last week um, on the day of Pentecost. I tried to address them by talking about how there are many spirits out there. Many spirits out there. But there is but one Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit allows us and teaches us how to use things so that they edify God. And uh, there are other spirits out there that we have to acknowledge exist that will misuse, misrepresent, um, um, and, and take and use us and even the things which are dear to us, the institutions which are dear to us, and use them for destruction and, and death and discrimination and all sorts of things. So I, I tried to speak to that effectively last week. I know many people, many churches, many pastors today will be addressing that. Today I need to address another circumstance, uh, the elephant in the room, um, um, which many of you are aware of, which, which many um, will still be learning of. And that is uh, this past week uh, letting you as a congregation, as a community, uh, know that um, I've accepted a call to be pastor at a, another church in Granite Falls, Minnesota. And I'll be leaving um, the beginning of July sometime. Not certain exactly yet when, the beginning of July to take that pastor. And when I say I'm accepting this call, um, I can't leave out my wife, Joyce, who's been with me doing this for 29 out of 30 years. Uh, the first year she was, we weren't married yet, and she was in Arizona, so in case you were all wondering why that math. Um, she has accepted uh, a call. She has accepted a call to be a middle school, grade 6, 7, 8, choral music teacher in Wilmer, Minnesota, some 30 miles away from where, we'll, where we'll, we, we will be living in uh, Granite Falls. Um, and as we do that, uh, as we make that, that uh, transition, and as I let you, and it's a difficult thing for me to do, we've been here nearly 14 years in this community, in this church, and, and, and with you people and your neighbors and all these things. Um, we, have, we have buried three of our parents in this time, and my dad now lives in... Um, an assisted living memory care unit. We've, we've graduated all of our kids from uh, this local high school, watched one get married. Um, we've put all now except for one through college with the gracious help of my parents. We have done many, many things, been involved in many, many things here in this community. Um, done many weddings, many baptisms, Far too many funerals. Been involved with such nice things, but more importantly, such great people. So as I come to you, I, I come to you with sort of this sense that, uh, that uh, 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 looking at what Jesus has said, maybe, maybe what Jesus says, and the circumstance of the disciples, and uh, Jesus uh, really is appropriate for us to address in our preparations to leave as well. When Jesus told the disciples to gather in Galilee, I'm not sure if they completely understood uh, or expected what was going to come about. 
they were so glad that he was there, risen from the dead, um, that they had their hopes renewed for everything that they had wanted to happen and that seemed had been completely cast aside and plowed under when he was betrayed and when he was crucified and died and buried. And so with his resurrection, they had all sorts of hopes once again. As he gathers them together, um, as he gathers them together, they have mixed emotions. I've encountered these mixed emotions, as has Joyce this last week, Wednesday, since we started letting people know. There have been tears. There has been um, um, frustration. There has been sort of a, there's, there's been a, a, a wonderful, um, and you can only do this when you love people and you take and you care for them, expressions of, of anger that we're leaving, you know. Um, but so when you, you know, when you love people and you know them, you can be angry with them. And, and so I understand that. And uh, that, that's a part of how close we are. Uh, uh, we don't want to see you go. Uh, um, as, or as one of, one of our parishioners texted Joyce, she said, first, you cannot go. Okay. Well, it's a little late for that now. But, but it, it's, a, it's a wonderful sentiment to say for people to feel that close to us that they can express that. As we also, you know, I want to tell you how difficult it was to express um, to, to um, Lori and to Kara Grunberg the church council president, um, my leaving. I worked so closely with Lori, um, usually four days a week, uh, two doors down, you name it. Um, um, anything that's done around here, um, she almost always has had a piece uh, uh, in it. And, and, and uh, telling her that I'm not going to be here to work with her. And she came about um, a year before I did. Uh, um, and so I had a short time with... Uh, Pastor Mike, and then a short time with with, uh, with Pastor Harvey, and uh, but we've been uh, we've been uh, working closely together for these many many years. This is the longest I worked with any person in my entire life. That you know, that, except for the organist here, uh, and and I've been working with her for for 29 years. Um, um, that was hard, very hard. And then with, with Church Council President Kara Gruenberg, she this is her second year. So church council president, and during her tenure as church council president, we've dealt with building issues, renovation issues, the death of her mom almost a year ago, Ruth. And she's, uh, she has been uh, um, strong, and, and she's lost a good friend at work, and one of her good friends, co-workers, in much the way that Lori has been such a great co-worker, one of her co-workers at work is also retiring. So she's experienced a great amount of loss and, and me telling this, I know, has been very, very hard. And she's been able to express some of that, you know. Um, we've, had a, we've worked together well over what's been a, what's been a real a tumultuous um, um, 18 months. The disciples had those mixture of feelings too. They said, um, it says here, they said, well, some worshiped him. I have to tell you, some people are, oh, amen, pastor, good for you. God's got something for you waiting down on the road. And, and we are so supportive of this. And, and you know, and, and so they are, they're just so worship, worshipfully supportive of us. And then um, it says that some of them doubted. And I know some of you doubt what in the world is going to happen. You've even asked me. All I can tell you is, is that I don't know for certain. I know that the Senate will work with the church leadership here to find consistent coverage for you um, so that uh, um, people will have to obviously step up and do things here, but will want to find uh, an interim pastor, a professional interim pastor for you to guide you through the process of looking for your next pastor. There's one out there. Don't know who it is right now. Don't know who it is. But I can, I can say that in some ways, based on my own experience, there's another pastor out there, whatever his or her name is, um, they are already sensing, is this my time to call, to, be, to seek a different ministry, to be challenged in a different way? They don't know that you exist yet, and you don't know them yet. 
But the Holy Spirit does. And the Holy Spirit is busy calling them in the same way that now you're entering into a call as well. And you both don't know the content of everything that's going to happen. And there's a little bit of confusion, a little bit of doubt, and a little bit of wondering, is, is this really what we want? Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Your mission, your ministry, um, um, as I leave, will not end. That's why you have a ministry statement. You have a mission statement. You have uh, uh, various ministries that come out of the people of this congregation. They're not utterly dependent on this building. Jesus reminds his disciples who have become very, very focused on him that in his absence, in his absence, they will finally have the power, full and complete power because of what's been given to him. He gives to them. They have the full and complete power to engage in ministry. He's freeing them up. He's empowering them to do and to be the disciples of God now to the ends of the earth. God's ministry can't be kept in one spot because of the, the bodily place that Jesus now lives. The Holy Spirit, now present in them, will then disperse with them into this world. God is doing things in and among you. And you'll, and you'll take these things out into the congregation. I won't be here. But you will. That's the hope of the congregation. You are the people of Breckenridge Luther. Church. You know, there's a series of pictures out here. I'm writing, talking to my uh, church council members, and I say, you know, there's a series of pictures out here. There are uh, uh, um, eight pictures. You've had eight pastors in uh, the length of this congregation now, over 75 years, nearly 80 years, uh, or I should say over 80 years at this point in time. Eight pastors, and uh, um, there's another one out there waiting for you. You see, you see, um, this is really a relay race where you, you know, you handed the baton on to me and I only carry it for so long. And then at some point in time, I hand it off to someone else. And they pick it up. And they've got new ideas and undoubtedly younger than me. Uh, um, they will uh, have fresh ideas and fresh and ready to go and bring you into the next point. We are all, if you look at those pictures of pastors, we are part of a relay race. We are part of a relay race and we carry that baton, carry that ministry on behalf of you and with you during this time. There will be another. There will be another. I am not the last person, last pastor you will ever see. So as we gather here today, um, Jesus has given uh, uh, the, the disciples a mission, and that is to go out into the world, baptize people, teach them in the name of the Father who created everything, the Son whom they see before them, the Holy Spirit which they now have, and which will stay in them because he says, I will be with you always. to the end of the age. So, um, that's the truth of no matter where we head. For 14 years I've been here with you and we have shared so many good things that cannot be taken away from us. We will be a part of each other's memories forever. We will be, because we are brothers and sisters in Christ, part of the communion of saints forever. We will be, we will be a part of the mission to baptize, to teach, to obey the one Lord Jesus Christ that we share forever. We come to be together for but a time. But the mission and ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ who is risen lasts forever. And so on this Holy Trinity Sunday, we are reminded every time that we pray or say the Trinity that we are brought together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We are one. Amen. 
Would you please rise? And we'll join together in saying our Apostles' Creed. This is the basis of our, of our Trinity Sunday. It is something I invite everyone to say to themselves once a day, just to remind yourselves of the basics of everything that you believe in and this holy commission you have. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you will turn to the back of your celebrate insert, we have prayers of intercession to join in. Called into unity with one another and the whole of creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guard, guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, you call everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing cares. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equality, and unity, instill wisdom in advocates who work toward justice in often ignored communities. Bring us together. Bring us together as people of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters in him, children of God, that we might bring together a torn country, that we may be able to declare and call those things which are evil as such, and then, and then call upon our Lord and God and seek new ways, new as new people, to forgive and move into a future which is holy and guided by your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us to see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all who have needs, all who've been affected by rioting or violence, all who have seen it, and their hearts who have been touched. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you accompany this body of faith, Breckenridge Lutheran Church. And as the rhythms of summer begin, as the rhythms of ministry continue, protect all who travel, renew all who enjoy a time of Sabbath, and shelter all who will not be protected from the sun's heat, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. O oh God of for a wind and of fire and of ministry. Pastors come and go carrying the baton, carrying a mission and handing it on to a people, inspiring them through prayer and through preaching and praise to be the disciples of Christ. And as we move on then, we ask your blessing upon those who will always be a part of us, even to the end of the age. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who... Amen. Amen. We continue our 
ministry then with the meal. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give our thanks, thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so we do remember and give thanks that we are able to gather and share. Pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I do need to give you some instructions now as to how we're going to be able to do this. Um, Unlike other instances, um, Linda and I will be communing last. And what we will do is we're going to come down uh, in front of the railing and we'll, we'll give communion to this side of the church first. And we'd ask that you, as you do, you would come up and uh, um, distance yourself, give yourself some distance, um, the center aisle, and then go back down the side aisle and uh, take your time give some distance to it. And then as we distribute um, the hosts, if you would cup your hands together, I will um, I'll drop one of these in wafers in your hands, and you can eat. And then, and then Linda will be next to me over here. And you'll notice that the communion cups are spread out. And so if you would carefully um, reach in and grab, uh, we won't be giving them to you just carefully and take your time uh, to go do this. Um, as you do that, then you can return to your seats. We'll come in this section and then this section. And after that, at the very end of the worship, we do want you to know that you, if you have an offering, there are places for you to deposit your offering as well. Thank you so much. I'm making all that noise. I'll turn myself off in a bit. Thank you so much for gathering to be a part of this body of Christ.
Holy Spirit, you have descended to be with us. But most importantly, you have come to be in us. For Jesus Christ's body and blood that we've now had, we've, we've eaten, we've drunk, lives in us. And if Jesus Christ lives in us, then we live with him forever. He truly is with us to the end of the age. And we can never be separated from him. And if we can never be separated from him, we can never be separated from one another. Bless this congregation and its ministry as we've now come to regather as the people of God. Our church has never really been closed, but our building has been reopened as a gathering place, and we are so thankful for that. Bless our ministry together. Amen. I have some announcements before a final blessing. First off, it seems as if our circumstances change almost weekly. Um, we printed this bulletin and we were looking at a maximum number of 60, but we also know that it's been uh, a ways since our last, uh, our last newsletter, so getting, getting the word out, uh, get the word out to people now that we can probably, uh, as many people as want to come, um, we just have to kind of, we're going to probably be in the every other, you know, the every other uh, uh, pew um, uh, mode. So, uh, but there's space here and there's space there as well. So, uh, I'm so good to see you. I'm so glad to see you here today. We've had some things happen in our, of course, in our church family. These continued prayers that we so want for Mel Clint, Cliff Stregge, um Deb Steffens. Continued healing for Amelia Rosso. Artist Austin hospitalized. Prayers for Arlene Evenson, who passed away um, last Sunday afternoon in uh, Fargo. Uh, the private family service was held, um, and the burial will be at Riverside Cemetery in, in Breckenridge. And so do keep that whole family in your prayers. Also, Del Kruger lost her brother, Roger Ekman, um, just recently. So do keep Del in your prayers as well. Um, a thank you once again to everybody who came and was a part of our special congregational meeting last week. Um, we voted to do significant repairs on our roof here and put in our security system and uh, uh, work with, uh, with accessibility. Um, this coming Wednesday night will be our faith and family worship. It is the time when we will have our senior recognition and quilt presentation. That will be at 7 p.m. I was going to say we have to limit it to 60, but, uh, you know, basically anybody probably who wants to come can come at this point. I don't think we'll probably have more than 120. Um, if you look uh, also, you probably um, see... It may be, I'm not sure, it may be that we um, are not live this morning over Facebook, but that we will post it on Facebook for somebody, for you to view later if you are, if you are tuning this in and kind of wonder what happened. Also, one last thing, and that is, uh, if you would like a custom-sized pew, church pew from Bethel Lutheran Church, um, I know my wife, uh, Joyce, is seriously looking at this right now. Uh, because she's been spending almost a week trying to refinish one uh, at our place. But you can call them up and they will, you just tell them what size you want. You say, well, I've got so much space that I want to fill. If you make a $175 donation to their kids, for the, to the kids going to the National Youth Gathering, they will cut it for you and deliver it in the Wapiton Breckenridge area. So. Um, here's a little, there's a little picture up here I've got, and uh, um, they've got them, they have been uh, turning them out for people, um, and uh, um, so if you're interested, uh, do let me know, do let me know, it's, trust me, they're in really good shape, these are not ones that are going to need work, all the, you have to do is uh, tell them how much, uh, how, how large, how long you want that pew, and they will cut it to size and deliver it, it's really a good deal. So, any other announcements that you can think of? 
Uh, this right, Harriet Bakken turned forever young, 92, Ooh, did I get that right? 90. 90, oh boy, sorry Harriet. Not turned 90 years on June 2nd, that's where I got the two in there. 90 years young, you would never know it. And uh, uh, wish her a happy birthday, um, uh, even if it's belated, a call um, or a card would be greatly appreciated, would be greatly appreciated. And we look forward to the time when she can feel comfortable back in a regular pew over here. So, any other things? God bless you then as we receive a final blessing. And now the Lord of creation, the wind and the fire, who created all, the Lord of the wind and fire of Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit who comes, the Lord of the wind and the fire, who took Jesus and, and gave him the power over all the elements to call me and saints, be with you as we gather together on this Trinity Sunday reminding you of all that he gives you to do because of all the love that he has for you in the name of that Father and of that Son and of that Holy Spirit. Um, as we uh, depart, what we would like for you to do is, um, we don't, we're not going to usher you out, but if you could take it pew by pew. Uh, um, this obviously is a, not as much of an issue as if we had 100 people in here and we were all going for the exit or coffee. None of those things are going to happen for a while. God bless you all.